think it's fair to say that uh, America is under a level of judgment. And for the most part, I think we're fine with it. I think we're like, oh, this is great. It's getting hot, but we like it. We don't want to turn. Uh, I remember Clinton. It was only sex. Character didn't matter. Amen. Basically, if a state says you're married, it's valid in all states. My libertarian leanings, I wonder, should the state get out of the business of affirming marriages? Now, I don't know how that all plays out. I just wonder, like, why does the state have to legitimize, the state have to legitimize your marriage? Because how did it happen before? Like, how were people getting married before the United States government was put into play? How did that work? How were they marrying? And what? how did how were marriages being recognized? Just something I was wondering. Woman suffrage and first wave feminism was the tip over the edge of the slope we're at the bottom of now. I don't think we're at the bottom yet. I don't think we've hit the bottom yet. We are definitely careening toward the bottom, Susie. But sadly, I think there's still more wickedness that they got in store for us. So, and there you go. The church gave a certificate of marriage. I think, and I've said this before, I think a lot of the things that we've done have taken the focus off of the centralization, off of the church and put it back on the state, put it on the state where it should never have been. Because I mean, just think about so many instances where if you had to been, for example, if churches still gave marriage certificates, imagine how many people would have to be, would be in church. Now, again, it's not a precluding, but there are bad churches and churches selling marriage certificates out the back door. I got you, but just think about it. Like, what would that do? Because think about what we have now. We got some insanity. Now there would still probably be faux churches and fake churches that are giving out marriage certificates to men and men and women and women and women and pillows and men and dogs. But why is the state involved in marriage certificates? Why? <clears throat> I would argue no state involvement, but it does also incentivize godly, a godly institution. No, I think we should have marriage. Now I'm not saying no marriage. I'm just saying why are the churches not legitimizing marriage and not the state? Then we... I, I think this will be the beginning of persecution, but I don't think it's there. I, I still, sadly, I think there's still at least three more levels, big shovel scoops that we're trying to get to the scoop at the bottom of this barrel. I think we just have to trust our king with the trust that we are doing exactly what our king told us to do. So because our king said it's a man and a woman and that's it. And that's what we do. It's a man and a woman. We're, we're not beholden to the whims of the culture. And we just have to remember that. The state became involved to prevent unsavory marriages. What were unsavory marriages? Ooh, unsavory. Primary interracial, interracial, but also to prevent the disabling from being able to marry and procreate. Okay. Now, I totally believe they used interracial marriage, and I believe they used incest as gateways to say, you need to let the state oversee marriage. I, I totally believe that. I could totally see that that was probably the gateway drug that they used to incentivize states licensing marriage. But I still don't understand like what like what's the purpose of it now? I mean now except for the state legitimizing wickedness, but what's the purpose of it now? I for the life of me. That was one of the things that led me to be a libertarian was I just thought the state was involved in too many things. Definitely, I think that the, like you said, their interracial marriage as well as um, incest were probably the gateways. But um, man, at this point in the game, man, this thing is has gone insane. So maybe it's because we, I, I would love to know, going back to the uh, judgment question, I would love to know, like, when did God's judgment start on America? I mean, of course, we, we could say the 60s. We could say um, when abortion was legitimized. Uh, we could say with so many other things. There's so many sins and skeletons in the American closet. Well, no fault divorce is a big incentive for keeping the state involved. Interesting. If divorce has to be adjudicated, a judge should issue a certificate. I can understand that. I hate it, but I understand it. If you can divorce for any reason, there's more divorces, more reasons to keep the state involved. But let's just say, let's just say we were able to keep churches were giving marriage certificates. There would be a lot of, you know, Tommy and Sally 
they're members of this church, they, they're married, they're having marital problems. There's a lot of checks and balances right there, I would feel, if they're able to work through. I think also we have to keep in mind that what we see is divorce today, what we see is marriages today. In a lot of instances, the byproduct of several decades, even hundreds of years of bad ideology. Because of those long history, those foolishness, I think that's how we've gotten here. So we're not just off track a little bit. We, we've been off track. We've been off target for some time. So I, I think that's part of parcel to the problem. What you got, Susie? Plus, once the state gets its hands into some part of the lives of another, they're very slow to relinquish that control. Amen.